Hi, Anne. Hi. Hi, Anne. Hi, Anne. Hello. Whenever somebody tells me to be on my better behavior, that's almost an invitation <laughs> to do the opposite. You haven't noticed that. Is Anne on? I don't see her on that. Yeah, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Just joined. I think Dan wins for the best chair award. Yes. More like a throne. Yeah. <laughs> Delusions of grandeur. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you'll have to bear with me a little bit because I didn't print the roll call sheets. And the old ones I have have old names on them. So just be patient with me. Hi, Jane. Well, hello, Russ. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Hi, Jane. Well, hi, Bobby. It's a beautiful Hello. day in the neighborhood. It indeed is. I've got seven o'clock, so you want to go ahead, Cindy? You I, have seven o'clock. Say again? It, I do have seven o'clock. Okay, so knocking on wood, I will call the December 16th, 2021 meeting of the Saugatuck, City of Saugatuck Planning Commission to order at uh, 7 p.m. Um, ask uh, Cindy Osmond, the uh, zoning, how do you call yourself again? Zoning, huh? zoning administrator. Zoning administrator to act as our kind of stand in clerk and call the roll, please. Okay, Crawford. And Here. you do have to you do have to state where your location is because it's the um, the Zoom meetings. Uh, Saga Tuck here. Uh, Gaunt here in Saga Tuck. Fox here. I think the whole deal is Saga Tuck, Allegan County, State of Michigan. Broker here in Saga Tuck. Hereford, if I'm remembering correctly. Thank you, that's correct. Uh, Sagatuck, thank you. Who did I miss? Me. Russ. Russ. Hi, Russ, Sagatuck, Michigan, County of Allegan. Got it, thank you for, for your patience. Everything is a roll call when we're on Zoom, so. It takes longer than usual, but we'll we'll keep at it. So. And that's everyone, correct? Yes. Alrighty, I will uh, entertain a motion to approve the agenda for this evening. So moved. Second. Moved by. Bobby and seconded by Russ Gardner. Call the roll, please. Gardner? Yes. Gaunt? Yes. Crawford? Yes. Fox? Yes. Broker? Yes. And Hereford? Here. OK, we have the agenda approved. Oh, you know. <laughs> 
Okay. Mute that dog anytime. If I'll entertain now in the motion for approval of the August 19th meeting. Of the Mr. Planning. Chair, I would like to make a correction. The approval of minutes is for the October meeting, not for August. Oh, yes. Sorry. Cut and paste. Works Sorry. every time. Got to highlight those. Yeah. Uh, yeah, correction. The. Uh, Minutes being approved are for the October, what, 21st meeting? Yes, October 21st meeting. Correction made. Still in a motion for that. There's another correction, I think. Okay, go ahead. Um, I was at the meeting, but I'm not noted as being at the meeting. Mm -hmm. That's that too. By the same token, you aren't noted as being absent. <laughs> I know, it's just <laughs> somewhere in space. <laughs> we meet at the meeting, so that correction is made, should be made. Got it. Any other questions, clarifications, comments, criticisms? I'll go back now then to entertaining the motion to approve those minutes, October 21st. So moved. So moved. Simultaneously. Was Gaunt and? I think Rich. Crawford, yeah. Crawford. Okay. That, does that count as a second? Yes. Okay. Gaunt. Yep. Calling, calling the roll, Bobby. Oh, yes. Gaunt. Thought, um, Crawford? Yes. Box? Yes. Um, Gardner? Yes. Broker? Uh, you know, I just wanted to confirm, Cindy, that it looked fine to me, but since I wasn't at the meeting, should I still vote on them? Actually not, sorry. Okay. And Hereford was not there either. We are missing um, Steve Manns and Mike Van Meter, who I expected both to be here, unless there's more hidden people I can't see. Cindy, I spoke to Mike about a half an hour ago when he said then he would not be able to, he wanted to make okay. it. Okay, okay. So he's excused? Uh, yeah. That makes it, um, a lot easier today. Uh, I do have one comment to make before we start. Uh, we have our two new members here, Anne and Richard. Uh, they were both appointed by city council, so they will both be voting with us tonight. Um, I just want to welcome them to the meeting and we look forward to having them participate so if you have any questions along the way, there are no stupid questions. If you think you, if you have a question in your head, somebody else probably has the same question. So don't be afraid to ask a question. And Dan, I'll let you go back to your agenda. I wondered if it would make sense in keeping with what you just laid out, if we'd have uh, Anne and Richard just you know, briefly introduce themselves. I mean. Obviously, Cindy and I were either knew them already or were part of the interviews, but some of you may not have had the pleasure of meeting both people. So, Ann? Sure. Hi, my name is Ann Broker, and I've uh, owned a property in Saugatuck since 2016 and have lived here full time since last year. Um, and uh, I was one of those people who was able to, to move here due to COVID and my work arrangement becoming more flexible as a result. Um, so I'm very excited to be more involved with the community and to, to join the Planning Commission. Welcome. Terrific. I'm Richard Hereford. I'm um, 
the retired CEO of a company in Kalamazoo, and I've lived here since 2011, and uh, delighted to be part of this group. So, thank you, Richard. Welcome. Should point out too that Anne is an attorney, so watch your step. <laughs> All right. Um, fourth item on our agenda is public comment on any item with a uh, uh, requirement of fewer than five minutes in total. Anyone choosing, wanting to make a comment before the commission should identify themselves, however, waving a hand or the hand raise button or any, if you've got a flag or whatever, let us know and we'll recognize you. And after being recognized, you state your name uh, and where you live. Anybody? Silence is deafening. Fair enough, based on there being no response to that, uh, we'll close public comment and go on to for, uh, number five, which is old business, there being none. We'll continue on to new business. We have three items, uh, the first of which is the uh, R1 Community Residential Zone District Front Yard Setback uh, ordinance. Um, and I'm going to ask Cindy to top line where that stands, although I think, uh, well, Richard and Ann won't, but the rest of us have had some water under the bridge on that. So Cindy, if you want to address that and then um, Cindy, should we do that within the context of the public hearing? Should I open the public hearing first? Yes, please. Fair enough. Okay. With that, then I'll call the call to order the hearing on the matter I just spoke about, the R1 community residential uh, hearing, uh, and ask for a summary of the measure by the zoning administrator, Cindy. So for those of you who were here last time, I'll try not to go too in depth, but last meeting, we um, approved an ordinance amendment that would allow for homes that are on an existing street that maybe have a vacant lot in between or maybe are a tear down and rebuild in the R4 zone district to be in line with the adjacent properties between two platted streets. And I do have a zoning map here and the, one, the zone district we did last time was this CER. I don't know if you can see my cursor, it's kind of light, but in this CER. And um, there was a question at city council about why don't you do the whole residential zone district because that makes sense. And in my previous life, we had that rule for all the zone districts. So you don't, if you have several houses that are lined up closer than 20 feet to the street, and you build a new one, you can go in line with those people coming, reducing the front yard setback to match what's already there between two intersecting streets. So we're just kind of expanding this R4 zoning to the same privilege that the, extend the same privilege to the R1, which is this big kind of cheek color well, it's really light dark yellow um, for the platted portions of that zone district. So when you're between two platted streets, you can line up with the others. So um, I'd be happy to answer any questions about that. Um, I'm sure poor Richard and Anne are going, huh? What in the heck is she talking about? But it really is just um, a way, to, it's good urban planning to have your houses all lined up rather than three set back 10 feet from the street and the next one comes along and sorry, you're right in the middle, you have to go back 20 feet. It just is good urban planning to allow for them to line up. So if, the, if anybody has any questions, please, there are no stupid questions. I'm good, Cindy, thank you. Thanks, Rich. 
Cindy, I do have a question. Is the language in the proposed amendment for the CR district the exact same that was proposed for the, the C4? It's almost exactly the same, but it's limited to platted lots, not ones that are meets and bounds descriptions. What meets and bounds are there, they weren't part of a, an approved plat that went through the state platting process where you go through and figure out all the utilities and all the traffic. Meets and bounds are just measured by um, a surveyor with a legal description to match. Okay. So it is the same, except it's limited to platted. Okay. Thank you. Cindy? Yes. Reading the, the uh, red line. Mm -hmm. it, I don't think it's, I don't think it's inaccurate, but it, it caused me to stumble when we say, or when the ordinance revision says, at least half of the exist, sorry, at least half of the established structures are built within the required front yard setback. Mm -hmm. I, I know exactly what that means, but it's not in the way it's worded, it, it sounds like they're built correctly respecting the front yard setback. I'm just wondering if the language could be a little clearer that what we're really saying is those houses are, <laughs> In our words, we're too far forward, but they're too far forward. But and I did have it. I did have different language in the original one that I submitted to the attorney's office, and they suggested this language. So built within the required is the part that says somebody's somebody's encroaching into the front yard. I'd almost rather it would say encroaching and built within the required because it you <laughs> certainly can make that modification built within the required it sounds like you did what you were supposed to do but in reality it, the, the opposite is so if at least half of the established structures are encroaching into the required front yard setback mm -hmm. i think that's clear to what we're talking about I get it. I think that's much clearer. So, anyone else? Sorry, I do have one other question, and apologies for the <laughs> very basic questions, um, but. Um, I guess one just general question I have, and Cindy, you spoke to this a little bit about how this is sort of, you know, just good city planning, but I'm just curious, just coming to this with a, a fresh eye and, and, you know, being new to this, just why, why someone couldn't come in for a variance and due to the ZBA, like why we put the exception in the regulations themselves versus just leaving sort of things perhaps simpler in a way? It can be done. It's sometimes it's not um, so much that you can't apply for a variance, but in order to be granted a variance, you have to meet um, at least four general tests. And one of them is if it's not unique to the property, I mean, if you had a hill in the back in your backyard and you couldn't move your house back any further, then you might be granted a variance. But if you don't have a practical difficulty, mm -hmm. then you don't meet the standards to be granted a variance if it's something that's not unique. So that's why. Isn't one of those standards as well that the, uh, in layman's terms, that the reason for the variance is not a self-created issue, which if, you've, if you're building a new one and tore down a house, you, the argument could be made, well, you made them, you know, that's your problem. So for those reasons, the other reason I remember talking about this with Cindy once before, is that the, the variance process is a time relatively, can be a time consuming process. So this gets rid of that. 
okay. it, it, it really is codifying what the um, what the ZBA has done in the past and making it so that you don't have to jump through two hoops and prove your hardship and all everything. You can just say, this is what's around me. This is where I live. There's people on other streets that have the same issue. Um, so you have it as a right to do it. Okay. And then I just have one other question related to that. Is the reason that some of the homes are closer, or it sounds like a good number of the homes are, or at least half are, are closer than 20 feet because they were grandfathered in, they were built a long time ago? Yes. And um, we didn't have zoning in this United States until 1926. So everything was kind of wherever you wanted it. We actually have some homes that encroach into the right of way and we've had to take those back to city council and get um, a revocable license so they could continue to be in the right of way. I know there's one on Pleasant Street that about a quarter of the house is into the right of way. And that's some of the things that, you know, the policy makers have to, weigh in on and policymakers being the city council. Okay, thank you. It's very helpful. Cindy, do we have any idea the number of homes that might be affected or uh, a percentage? When we looked at the two other little areas that we had this amendment for, it was pretty easy for me to go and take right. screenshots and I presented that. Yes. This area is pretty darn large. So I could I I couldn't do that same thing without burning my eyeballs out right. by taking all those screenshots. So well, that's what I kind of surmised is we had a very good idea of the, you know, kind of a quantification of what we were dealing with, whereas with this one, we, we So don't. I did go through and look at all of them. It will not affect a very large portion of the properties. A lot of them are already all lined up. A lot of them are already lined up at 20 feet. And um, it's just a, just a handful of houses that will be affected. There's some um, over here in this, I want to point with my finger, but that's not going to work. Um, in this area, that will be able to take advantage. And uh, these, this area seems to be all pretty well lined up. And then there's some over here where the houses are set quite a, quite a bit further back. Um, but there's a very strange shaped plat on Holland Street which is Flint, Flint Assessor's Plat that may be able to take advantage of it as well. But for the most part, either they're already lined up or there's just a handful. So I would say maybe 10%. Okay, appreciate that. Any other comments? We'll then go forward to allow public comment specifically on this on, uh, on, on this measure. So I will I'll read this. Um, we'll do public comment in this order. Uh, first, there'll be supporting comments. Those are finished. There'll be a po anyone making an opposing comment. That's finished. General comments, any sort. And finally, repeat cap commenting opportunity in the same same order as as originally. The, uh, the comments are limited to five minutes. 
to address to the chair and the commenter will identify himself or herself by name and place of residence. So all of that probably unnecessarily being said, are there any comments on the merits like that? I'm only seeing one uh, non commission person with an invitation or comment there. So, not seeing any hands raised. So, <laughs> you can take a last call. Also, there being none, uh, we're going to close the public comment section and begin mission deliberation on the uh, ordinance revision. So feel free anyone to uh, look into a group and want to talk over somebody else and fire away. So I'm, I'm happy to chime in with a thought as the new person, but uh, understanding that, you know, just, this is just my impression or, or just a thought, not, not that I'm opposed to this uh, by any means, but I just wanted to, you know, one thought that crosses my mind is um, if there's such a, you know, if, if there's such a small percentage of homes affected by this issue that perhaps a wait and see approach might make sense to see how things work out with the other district where the similar provision has been passed, but um, just a thought that I'll throw out to, to get the discussion going. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Um, Chairman Fox, I wonder if it might be, or um, it, Administrator Osmond, I wonder if it might be worth a moment to just walk through kind of how we got started on this path for this particular change. I, I know there was a uh, I don't think it was in the in the uh, minutes, but uh, there was a document or a letter that we received from a resident at um, on Mason Street, just behind the SCA, which which kind of kicked this off. So maybe that would help um, Commissioner Brooker and Herford on this. Sure, um, we did receive uh, a request for um, reducing the front yard setbacks for the whole zone district because somebody wanted to tear down and build a new house. And the other houses on that street between two streets were anywhere from zero to five feet back from the property line or even seven. And um, I thought, well, reducing the front yard setback for the whole zone district really doesn't make as much sense unless certain conditions exist. And if they exist in various places, like, I don't know, how many blocks did I look at, but um, it's made more sense to say, okay, if you have these conditions, we're gonna let you shorten your front yard. But if you don't have those conditions, then you have to meet the setbacks. So that's how I, did that and I knew that in my former life that's the way the whole zoning ordinance was it was all zone districts not just a specific one but we have areas here that it would make sense to allow people to do that um, it's not just a blanket that everybody can go as close as they want to the sidewalk and the planning commission decided on a seven foot minimum so even if the houses are one foot off or three foot off, a new structure would have to be at least seven feet off. So that's what the Planning Commission came to that decision based on the, side, the setback for the side yards are seven feet and seven feet seemed to make sense. Um, in Holland, it was five feet, but this isn't Holland, so. <laughs> Uh, and we do have some older subdivisions here where there are 
there are setback issues. In going to the Zoning Board of Appeals, they might not meet the standards required for um, a variance. The, the practical difficulty is hard to, hard to establish if there is no practical difficulty. Your lot is flat, rectangular. What's, what's the problem with the property? Because it has to be a problem with the property. So um, I don't know, I, it, would, it would just be a handful and it would be in those locations where there's something different about the, the block that you want to encourage them to line up, not to step back like a missing two side of your smile. And I think, and I, I know several or a few of us, I think this is just now. Look, went, and I would encourage any commission member on any property issue to, to put your feet on the ground and, and go look mm -hmm. at it. And that's hard to do now, this one, because of where it stands versus and how it's gotten here. But when we did, you see pretty immediately what is the problem with the situation that this guy if he's, he's going to he's going to look if he if he builds with a 20 foot setback he's going to have a great view of the sides of the two houses next to him because they're whatever 13 or 14 feet toward the sidewalk from where his front porch will have to end based on the on the setback so uh, and, and and it was it wasn't just a, it wasn't hypothetical because there was a fellow who was wanting to do just that and, and you look at it and you go oh my god if he was required to do that if he ended up going forward it had looked like you know what it was he going to build a garage in front of his house and didn't because it's there's this you know it's in out you know line of homes and it kind of mm -hmm. looked, so I'm, I'm only saying that to go back to, to having to look at it on the ground. I realize you can't do that. Although we, I even, regardless of what it, how this gets. This is not the right one. Back there behind the SCA and take a look. I see that Mr. Osmond was trying to pull up some of the, we had a really documented, <laughs> Well documented pictures of uh, some of the examples that are being discussed. Um, so I can see trying to find them. Yep, I want to look at them not on your share screen, but I can't. So no, oh, this is not the right meeting. That was the. Yeah, Silver Planning Commission. That would be it. Oh. I'm sorry, I don't have that right in front of me, but I'll keep looking. Um, another place. Cindy, don't the dots on the map show relatively the spot of the building that's on it? Yes. You can see, and the property being, the area being talked about is the lower right hand corner of this. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Goes across. So the corner of that big square, there are. Uh, Four dots in a row, pretty much in a row there. 
going left to right or horizontally. I can point to it on mine, obviously, but you see where the letter C E R. Oops. Sorry, I found it. There you go. The sidewalk is generally where the front property line starts. You can see this. This um, structure goes right up the sidewalk. And um, this one is another picture of it. Another house. And to have somebody step back further than that would just look odd and not be good urban planning. I think I also did present Oh, maybe I didn't. Can, can I have screenshots of aerials? I recall that. Maybe if you want to just page down a bit, you can show the, the property in question, or at least the property owned by the person who sent the letter to us. Yeah, I don't just know if I have a photo of this. No, you did. I did? Yeah, if you back up just a bit. That's the house, that was the house. That's the house. That's on the corner of St. Joseph and Mason. Mm -hmm. This is the house that's owned by the resident, by the person who sent the letter to us that brought this issue to our attention initially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if he were to tear that down, his new structure would have to be 20 feet back from the sidewalk and it would be really out of character for the, for the neighborhood. Um, I can go back to the other. And, so, so, and, um, and for some historical perspective, that house was owned by Cora Bliss Taylor. She yeah. was a, yeah, a, a fairly well-known local artist. I actually took art lessons as a little kid inside that house, but uh, that's how that's what I call it, the Cora, Cora Bliss Taylor house. Is that for perspective? Yes. It's my history. Yeah, our world will never be the same since Russ took lessons there. <laughs> well, they didn't take. <laughs> and just it's for somewhat interesting, the, the porch, of course, the, the porch on this particular example, that, that, that porch is within the seven foot setback uh, that we would normally require, right? Am mm -hmm. I correct? And theoretically, you couldn't, I mean, if you were building from scratch, you couldn't build a entryway porch like that, could you? Mm -hmm. and, and conform to this new Right. Ordinance. So the porch would probably have to go, but the rest of the house, to make it be set back 20 feet from the sidewalk, it would be out of character and out of place. Well, that's what why we did what we did. It's just a question of whether to extend this to other areas. Uh, that we don't have benefit of quite, and I appreciate the, all the work that would be required, but we don't have benefit of the same background information on the new proposed I can't affected try areas. These multiple screens are kind of difficult to navigate. Um, let's see. Interesting how they're running their uh, drainage water right onto the sidewalk there. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I lost my whole thing. Yeah, um, if you want to table this until I have time to do that full block by block study, that's that would be fine. Um, it's just that it came from city council and they said, why don't you extend that to every other? Uh, I personally am not comfortable going farther than this without some additional work, some study. Although city council is certainly an august body, I think I would like to have perhaps a little more information. I agree. I mean, it's just good planning to have as much information as you can have uh, in decisions like these. I mean, I do, I'm, I do like the idea of consistency of application, um, um, but um, considering what we're dealing with in the city um, that's fairly complicated. Um, so I think more time is appropriate personally. Maybe Cindy, the easiest thing, easiest way to approach it, the most efficient way to approach it is a Google Earth, you know, whatever, block by block or two blocks by two blocks to get a look at because I would think from the eye in the sky, it would have ample appreciation for any sort of any sort of larger issue related to where the homes were relative to the front lot lines. I could certainly do that. But it sounds like it's uh, uh, the uh, prevailing commission view. So unless, unless there are other points of discussion, we can move to the commission action and then entertain a motion that table based on uh, time needed for a, additional study in the, in the area. So any other, other I don't imagine there are other issues related to this. That being the, there being none, let's uh, I'll entertain a motion for uh, tabling this particular action until either the next meeting or until the study's complete and we get a chance to look at. It. So moved. Second. Support. Lots of support. I have Russ and Bobby. Sure. Okay, I'll call the roll. Bond? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Broker? Yes. yes. Crawford? Oh, yes. Uh, Hereford? Yes. And Fox? Yes. Motion carries. We'll move on to our second item of new business. And that is the a discussion, uh, a planning commission 2022 sort of look ahead discussion for which there is no uh, you know, scripted agenda item. So, um, but I will, rat out Russ for having brought this notion to me and therefore dump it on his lap to, uh, I think it's a good idea to uh, summarize it since it's fresher in his brain than it is in mine. His brain is younger than mine too, so that's. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. I knew that was coming. Um, so it, 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 I was inspired by the city council who has recently been going through some strategic planning and um, as the city council representative to the planning commission, as well as a planning commissioner, I had a brilliant thought, well, why aren't we doing something similar at the commission level? Um, so 
what I suggested to Chairman Fox is that we have a discussion around what we might want to, and again, a discussion at this point, what we might want to look at to accomplish. I mean, we're obviously going to have business brought in front of us over the course of the year, applications made, uh, discussions and so forth. But are there some other things that we could be thinking about that we could continue to improve our performance as a planning commission as well as support the community and also, um, I think, fulfill our role as, as uh, you know, forward thinkers when it comes to the land use within the city of Saugatuck. Um, something that I, that I proposed uh, was that we come up with a, um, and, and we can debate what the, what the actual terminology is going to be, but basically, you know, maybe three to four goals that we could all agree on for the coming 12 months. We could then decide, um, you know, each one of those goals would be aspirational, but then below them would be specific tactics or actions that we would agree upon to fulfill those goals. That once we agree on what those, what that might look like is then I was a plan as the representative back to the city council is I would take that back and I would share that with the city council so they know what direction we're moving in. So it wouldn't, in my opinion, it would not be a, a, a recommendation standpoint. It would be, this is what we're doing. Um, you know, we are not a uh, policy making body. We are a, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're a planning commission. However, I think we can talk about things to do to support our role. Uh, a few things that I had mentioned uh, to Chairman Fox, one was just, and these are my ideas, some of the goals, continued improvement of city zoning code, adopt and implement long range land use plans. And my thought there was that there's a tri-community master plan that you'll hear referenced by several people at several different levels. And from a past experience, I believe a lot of what's in the zoning code does support that, but I think it's a worthwhile exercise to you know, reflect back on that, making sure we're still in keeping with what the overall tri-community master plan was intending. Um, increased citizen participation in the planning process and um, this, I think, one tactic is something we've discussed already is, is, is doing better signage when we have a property that is up for discussion. We have like a sign that we put up in the yard for a certain amount of time, but information regarding what the request is. So people that just simply walk by, they don't even have to be a resident. They will walk by and say, oh, there's something going on with this property. They may or may not choose to comment, but if they see something and they have some thoughts, that's going to encourage them to, to participate in the process. That's just one example. Um, planning commission training opportunities for, you know, and, and, and um, though I've been on the planning commission previously, this changes all the time. And, and, and I would like to see us all uh, continue to improve our experience. I mean, some of this you just learn by experience, but I think there are some basic principles and so forth that we could, you know, probably all, all, all learn. And there's training through MML. And I think there's some other professional organizations that provide online training. And I think Steve Manns, Cindy's got her hand raised. I think Steve Mann's recently went through one. So Cindy, do you have some thoughts on that? I do. I have already um, started planning a training session. There's two different options that we have that, um, that I'm aware of. And I was doing it, planning on doing it in conjunction with the township and with Douglas doing it to share the cost. Um, I was planning to bring in two top planners in the state of Michigan. That's Lene Wells and David Jurassic. I can never say his last name. Um, but to do a joint training at the Township Hall, which is bigger than our city hall, and uh, have him do a training. And the other option is if we can't agree on a cost for that, there is uh, a very good extensive training session. That's the one that Steve Manns went to. It is a Zoom, a Zoom meeting. It's very interactive. I was surprised how good it was and how interactive it was, but that is in the works. Um, so that would be a six week, one night a week training for three hours, but it is great. And I would highly encourage that if we can't get these two top planners to come in, that we do the, um, the online training with Spartyville. It's, it's the MSU Extension Service and it is very good. I think Dan attended one a couple of years ago, Steve Manns did. 
I know Garnet did. Um, it helps with a lot of things like keeping you in your lane. Um, you know, some stuff you kind of do with blinders. The ZBA more than anybody has to keep their blinders on, but um, there's, there's things that the planning commission can do and there's things that they can't do. So it does help set those boundaries for us. Um, I lost my train of thought here. But that I think that's quite exciting to get in that training on board. This is up, what's up on your screen now is what we did every year except for COVID year to go ahead and set those goals and what things that we wanted to work on. Um, just exactly kind of how Ross said, we get the goals, um, educate our members with training programs, um, acknowledge that zoning ordinance is a living document, identified issues that we wanted to target, some special things exactly like signage, we have conflicting sections in marinas and waterfront construction that we didn't get to. Um, consolidation of R1 zone districts on the west side. We have more zone districts in the city of Saugatuck than we had in the city of Holland. Um, I was flabbergasted when I opened the book and saw that we had 19 different zone districts. That's quite amazing. And we were able to combine two of them, I think. And then um, this still is on the, on the table, address parcels that are located in more than one zone district. And I have a lot of things to add to this. There's a lot of housekeeping things that need to be done. Um, there is um, street vacation policy that I want to get in place to, um, it's actually an ordinance that involves the planning commission in the review, not just city council. So that, that's very helpful. Um, we have uh, the split zone districts. Those are gonna, that's gonna be tricky. Um, I would like to bring in examples from other cities, how they treat split zone districts or parcels that are located in more than one. And I know we have one extreme example on the west side, part of the zone district requires a minimum lot size, or one zone district requires a minimum lot size of 8,712 square feet as a minimum. And the adjacent zone district, which this parcel purchased from, that is the parcel that requires a minimum lot size of two acres. So half the parcel is in the two acre zone and half the parcel is in the 66 by 132 zone. So doing construction there is going to be, and it, I, I know it's gonna come and I wanna be proactive and get, get figure that out before we get there. Some cities go with the most restrictive. Some cities go with the least restrictive. Some go by whatever is a bigger area. Um, so I, I want to dig up some examples and get that addressed. We have a few other cleanup things where there's not typos, but kind of like typos that are make it unclear. So this is not something that we haven't done before. We've done it before. And the master plan, that was what I was thinking of. The master plan is part of the Zoning Enabling Act. And it tells us when we do that and when we look at it, it's getting to the time when it's going to be master plan needs to be adopted by 2016 or 2026, excuse me, the last one was 2016. So you update that every, every 10 years. Um, and what you're talking about now is the midterm, what you do in the middle is you review your ordinances and make sure that there's not something that's conflict with the, with the master plan and make some changes to the zoning ordinance if you need to. And that kind of goes along all the time until you get up to that 10 year. And it's probably a good year, 18 months review of the master plan. The last time we did it, we did it in the tri-community 
master plan way because that was advantageous for us to apply for grants. Um, Douglas is kind of looking at theirs already. So we might want to start thinking about it. We have um, three more years, but it's something that's gonna be on the radar pretty quick. But, uh, it seems to me just having heard the last, whatever it's been, since Russ was talking, <laughs> there are, there's no shortage of things to be addressed. And I'm, and, and some of which are already being addressed, the training one or, or however you want to discuss it as a, as a goal, the, the uh, planning commissioner training, updating, uh, learning, is certainly one. Um, the area that Cindy was just talking about um, in terms of uh, cleaning up administrative stuff sp specific from the zoning administrator's point of view, not unlike what we're doing, what we just talked about tonight with the, with the, the, the setback things. That's a, that's a, a, a project area, if you want to call it that. The training is a project area. And go ahead, Cindy. You're holding so the, book, the book that you get on your training from yeah. the extension service. That's the Sparta book. So I'm only I'm I'm only cautious on this in that. <laughs> We have two brand new planning commissioners who are looking like they saw God in the last 20 minutes. <laughs> and I don't and, and I don't want to I don't want to make that worse than it already is. And I'm so I'm sorry, I'm going on and on here, but when when Russ and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, we thought about well, maybe it makes sense for us to do kind of an off-campus or a kitchen table discussion to come up with this, you know, to to ideate on this on this whole area. And I think that does make sense. Um, but I think the, the first step in that is to agree on the three or four big areas, because underneath those big areas, the specifics of those are gonna be a, a developing situation from th that point going forward. I mean, you can see some of that in advance and some of it'll come as it comes in the case of like the ordinance changes or whatever. So, um, Russ's suggestion uh, was that he buy, you know, breakfast for everybody someplace nice and we do, <laughs> we could actually, we could do it at my house, I don't care, but have that sort of a meeting which would be required to it'd be a public meeting because, uh, because it has to be, uh, but with an 18 hour notice and we could figure out a way to have Zoom availability somehow, or we could do it, I suppose we do it at the city hall, it doesn't make any difference. Yes, we do have the hybrid capability now. So, but instead that of that sounds like a good approach. Instead of the antiseptic thing, we'll have donuts and coffee and you know fun for I'll the kids. I'll spring for that. <laughs> the donuts or the coffee, because one's both. 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 <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I, I, in that area, I'd like to. I don't know if it makes sense to. I mean, I'll. I'll poll all of you now is does a Saturday morning for would probably be an hour and a half, two hours max work for everybody, generally speaking. I mean, we never get everybody. That's fine. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. You're up by that time, right, Rich? Generally. Generally. Okay. Well, you know what? I'll, I'll look at the calendar, pick a couple of dates and, and, and send them out to see where everybody try and get everybody land on one day and you know figure like 10 to noon on a Saturday morning and in January ideally no later than February what else you got to do in January let's try let's try for January yeah. and get started yeah, yeah I'd, I'd, I'll aim early January will be the will be the goal so great. so I, I sense a general consensus on this which is great and I appreciate um, you bringing up the fact that this has been done before so this is a this is not new. Um, gosh, darn it. I thought I was unique and I'd come up with a special idea, but that's fine if I didn't. 
it's not the first time. But, uh, you know, we also might want to think about making this a two year plan as opposed to one year because it can be, um, we only are, uh, you know, by charter, we're only meeting once a month as an official body. But we, as, as Chairman Fox just mentioned, we can meet outside of that. But again, um, if you're like me, um, I do this out of an interest in, in and in a passion for the community, but it's not my life. So I wanna make sure that it's, you know, um, this is important to me to do this, but I also don't want it to become burdensome or, or to, you know, turn anybody off either. I mean, that's not the goal here. At the end of the day, it makes us uh, a better commission in my opinion. I would I'd be agree. interested to hear what anybody else has to say. I agree. Um, Dan, when you look at your dates, I will be gone January 15th through the 29th. But otherwise, one of those would look, probably will be one of the first two Saturdays. That's good. Not, Not the first because that would be New Year's Day, but. Uh, we'll, <laughs> whatever, I'll pick one of those dates and get it out to you all tomorrow, some, either okay. or Cindy. And then I will see if I can't bring our consultant who came to the meeting um, on the Butler two-story patio. Because I think it's important that we don't start coloring out of the lines. There's some areas we can't get into and we don't have jurisdiction over. So um, if you let me know, I will see if I can't bring him in. I right, pick the date for tomorrow and go from there. This has been productive. And I think, as he always says, Commissioner Gardner. I prefer first names, small town. But, uh, thanks, Russ, for bringing You're this welcome. up. Um, okay, well, that'll include our 6B planning commission, uh, uh, planning discussion. And you all have received the 2022 meeting dates, which is the next item on the agenda. And I'd ask only if, if you, we don't need to go through every date that somebody can't make a meeting, but if, if you know of some other sort of structural problem with, with one of those Thursday dates in the coming year, bring it up and we can address that now. Just a, a point of order, I don't know if I, I'm assuming I'll be able to make all these dates, but if I don't, do I notify you as the chair? Do I notify you and the zoning administrator? What's 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 the normal protocol on that? Either or both. We're not. I mean, we're not. Right. The only thing I would be concerned about is if we have a lot of people going on one day that we might not have a quorum. quorum. We could reschedule. Yeah. We could reschedule. So um, when I send out your packets, I usually ask for an RSVP. We don't have anything for January yet. Um, it would fall on a day that I will be gone. And in that case, um, the consultant would um, be the one that would be doing the meeting with you, probably via Zoom. Our last visit from him was rather pricey. And, um, you know, I don't like spending taxpayer money. I, I'm, I'm very sensitive to that if we don't if he can come by Zoom and save us 500 bucks, that would be well worth it, so. Right, Cindy, I know that I have two conflicts right now. Should I notify you about those? Or? Nope, wait till we get closer. Some meetings are like January, I don't have any applications and I don't have anything to bring to you. Okay. And if, if we don't have any applications, then the meeting will be canceled. And I'll know by next week, because that's the deadline to file. Okay. On, that point, on that point, Cindy, perhaps the January, even if you weren't able to make it, the January meeting could serve as a useful follow-up to our Saturday morning meeting. So you get, so I wouldn't just arbitrarily cancel that meeting, even if it's, even if it's sort of just us folks talking about priorities or, or plans off of priorities, whatever it is. So that makes sense. Alrighty. Okay. Uh, item seven on the agenda is communications. Of which I have to, you have to adopt this meeting schedule. Sorry, oh. you have to make the motion. I move that we adopt the 2022 planning commission dates as presented. Second.
No further discussion. I will call the roll. Gardner. Yes. Hereford. Yes. Broker. Yes. Fox. Yes. Gaunt. Yes. And Crawford. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, now on to item eight, or I'm sorry, item seven, communications with us, of which I am aware of none. None. None of which I'm aware of. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Um, and number eight on the agenda is reports of officers and or committees. At this point, I don't think we have any of those either in force or going on. We are open once again for public comment. Uh, this time limit for three minutes with otherwise the same rules apply. If you choose to make a comment, please let us know by raising your hand, making a sign on video. Is that a beep? I don't okay. see any hands raised and I don't see anybody unmuting themselves. So last seeing, call. Seeing or hearing none. We'll close public comment. Uh, and as one brief comment, I will, as we say, we'll, we'll pick that January, early January date for our coffee with Russ deal and uh, get that to, out tomorrow. With that, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment of the meeting. So moved. Second. I'm sorry, who made the motion? Ann? Bobby. Bobby. I can't write and look at the same time. <laughs> okay. Um, Gaunt? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Hereford? Yes. Broker? Yes. Crawford? Yes. And Fox? Yes. All right, motion carries. We're adjourned. And with that, everybody, wish for a Merry Thank Christmas. You. Merry Christmas. Thank everybody. you. Happy holidays. You yes, happy Merry holidays. <laughs> happy holidays to all. Bye bye. Bye. And to all, and to all a good night. Good night. <laughs> yeah. Good meeting. Appreciate everybody being here. Thanks. Thanks.